Hello, everyone, and welcome back again. My name is Keith Gebhardt, and in this lecture, we are going to discuss the HTTP protocol. Hypertext Transfer Protocol, also known as HTTP, is one that you'll probably all be pretty familiar with, as it is the main protocol used when we connect to any website on the internet, and it is quite simple to understand. HTTP is a protocol which is used to transfer information between web clients and web servers, meaning if I am sitting on my computer opening up Amazon.com, then Amazon.com is sending me something in return. When we connect to a website, we first type in the web browser where we want to go. So let's say we're typing in learntechtraining.com. Well, our computers know we need to resolve that domain name that we entered into the URL on our web browsers so our computers know how to communicate to the proper web server. Our computer will use the DNS information on our network adapter, forward the information to that DNS server's address, and then the DNS server will resolve our domain name to the IP address that we need to use to access the web server. The DNS server will then send us back that IP address of the server, which learntechtraining.com resides on. Once our computer receives that information, it will now use TCP to establish an HTTP connection with LearnTechTraining.com so we could view the web contents. So basically what all that is saying is first we are trying to get to LearnTechTraining.com. To do that, we have to type it in what? The URL on our web browser. So it's going to be you want. But we're going to use LearnTechTraining.com here for our example. Our computer's IP address is 1.1.1.1, and our DNS server's IP address is 2.2.2.2. Our computer, remember, it gets an IP address, and it also gets a default gateway, and it also gets a what? A DNS server address, right? So we have this, which is 1.1.1.1. This will probably be a class C subnet mask, so it's going to be a CIDR notation 24, and our DNS address is 2.2.2.2. So what's going to happen is, is first, as soon as we start talking and and the computer realizes it needs to go to a DNS, it's going to open up a port on our computer, which it gave us 1030. This is our source port. Destination port is what? 53, because that is the source known port or destination port for a DNS server. And here you can see it filled it in the DNS. Now, this little block here would be known as what? Our segment. And remember, our segments are layer four. Next is taking the source IP address from the sending device, which is our client, because this is 1.1.1.1. And it's going to the DNS server address, which our computer knows because it's listed on the network interface card as 2.2.2.2. And that is our destination address. This here would be known as what? Our packet, okay? This is the packet information we have. So, so far right there, you're seeing a couple different things for our data encapsulation process. You're seeing our layer four segment and how it's getting its information. And you are seeing our layer three information, how it's getting the packet information, the IP address information. Once this DNS server resolves the domain name, which is learntechtraining.com to the IP address it needs to use, it sends it back to our computer. So it went in here, did its thing, and now look at this. It's saying the IP address for LearnTechTraining.com is 3.3.3.3. Notice how the source and destination port just flipped. They are now different. And the reason for that is because this is now the sending device. We are going this way to our computer. This is where it's coming from. That is the new source. And he is what? 53. So we will put in our header for our segment, source port 53. And our destination port is now the port that our computer initially had because that is our destination. So this would be start and this would be finish at this point, right? And again, you can see how our source and destination IP address information here changed as well because he is the source and he is the destination. Once our computer receives this information and he knows what the IP address is to reach learntechtraining.com, he will establish a TCP connection. That TCP connection will go all the way through and you can see our source port changed. That doesn't always change, but it can change. And now he's using the destination port of 80 because that is what H TTP uses to establish a connection. That is the known port for HTTP. So he will use that as his destination port. Source port again is coming from our computer and destination again is going to our LearnTech training website. At this point, he will make his three-way handshake connection saying SYN, SYNAC, A-C-K, and then acknowledge. That's the way your computer will make its three-way handshake. And then it'll send it back and it will give its HTTP connection. Okay, guys, it's pretty simple. So let's go ahead and clear this palette real quick. And let's go take a look at this and packet tracer. So here we can see we have the same example. The only thing I did differently was I changed the name of our web server to learntechtraining.com. If I go into my PC now and I go to my web browser here and I type in www.learntechtraining.com, 
you can see my website comes up here. Let's go ahead and trace that packet as it goes through though. So I will open up that web browser again with the virtual packet simulator here. I'm gonna hit the web browser and I'm gonna type in www.learntechtraining.com hit enter, and I'm gonna just make this go a little bit faster and auto capture. You can see how it goes to the DNS server, it goes back to the computer, and right there is where we are establishing our, D our TCP connection. And again, it's gonna go right to the web server, back to the computer where it makes its HTTP connection. One thing I wanna show you is where it's changing from the source and destination, okay? So we are going to the DNS server right here and we can see what our source and destination port is. Source port is 1027. Source port here is 53. You can see how that's changing when it's going from a computer back to a computer. And again, when we get down here to HTTP, you can see how the source and destination port are changed again. My destination port now is 80 because that is what HTTP requires you to use. If I open up Wireshark here and I look at a packet that I went to learntechtraining.com and you can see DNS resolved, but look at all the different DNS connections it had to make from me to my ISP, to my website host, really, which is bluehost.com. It had to go through all these different queries to make a connection. And then look at all the TCP connections it had to establish to do so, all the way before I get to my first HTTP GET protocol. All right, guys, so you really got to see HTTP in action. But not only did you get to see HTTP in action, you also got to see in action with DNS. And you were also introduced to a very important concept, which is our data encapsulation process, right? You got to see how our source and destination port numbers are changing on our segments for UDP or TCP. You got to see how our source and destination IP addresses are changing between our computer going to our DNS, from our DNS going back to our web server, from our computer to our web server. Everything is changing, and packets and headers are being encapsulated, de-encapsulated, de our port numbers are changing, our IP addresses are swip, you know, swapping back and forth, reversing. It's, it's really, really interesting stuff. I love trying to talk about data encapsulation. I love explaining data encapsulation because it is really the gritty details of where our data is being communicated to. Yeah, we're not going into a lot of the routing protocols and things like that, which do play a role in the data encapsulation, but just for your CSENT exam and getting into your uh, CCNA, with this, everything I'm teaching you in this course, you're going to be you're going to be golden. There's a few minor details that are just a bit more complex that you will still need to you know do a full CCNA course to learn, especially when it comes to like VLAN headers and tags and different routing protocol tags, checksums and frame check sequences and different things that we still add to all these data encapsulation processes, right? But you got to see the meat and bones of everything going on right now. Now there's still quite a bit more that we got to talk about, but again. Again, you really got to see virtually in Packet Tracer how we are connecting to a web server, going through DNS, going back to the computer, going to that web server. And then I showed you in Wireshark how we are connecting to a real website, my website, learntechtraining.com. Okay, so you're able to see how many different connections it really does take to establish that connection, not only just going through all those different DNS queries, but then all the different TCP connections. It's quite amazing. You know, we always joke about how slow our internet's going, but we really take it for granted with really how quick things are going on there in the background. So with all that said, if you have any questions, please use this time to ask or leave your comments now. Also, please do not forget to check out my YouTube channel. All right, guys, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Go to Learn Tech training on YouTube and subscribe, like the videos, watch the videos. They are there for you. They are free lectures. They will be free labs. And there are going to be tons of more videos that we're going to be putting up from here on out. And there's going to be tons of different promotional offers for you guys to take different courses we offer at a very, very nice price for you in the future. And we also announce different times when we're giving away free courses as well. With that said, I will see you guys in the next lecture.